So, metabolism. Let's talk about what it is. So, uh, metabolism, when you use this term in like normal conversation, if somebody says, hey, I got a fast metabolism, or I got a slow metabolism, or something like that, um, it means something slightly different than what it does when uh, we're talking about metabolism in biology. So in biology, metabolism is the sum total of all chemical reactions that happen in an organism. Uh, some of these chemical reactions are going to take small things and make them bigger. Some of these chemical reactions are going to take big things and make them smaller. Some of them are going to use energy. Some of them are going to yield energy. Some of them will be neutral. So all of those things together, all the chemistry that happens in an organism is its metabolism. There are two parts to metabolism uh, in the biological perspective. There's anabolism and catabolism. Now, when most people say metabolism, uh, or like they're talking about, you know, your metabolic rate, or, uh, you know, you got to get your metabolism up, or stuff like that, what they're really talking about is catabolism. And catabolism is basically the rate at which you break down complex molecules and harvest energy. So how fast you burn fat, how fast you burn carbs, um, all of that is catabolism. Anything that involves taking something big, like say a starch, this and then breaking that into individual pieces um, that is catabolism if you're taking a protein and breaking it down cutting it up into little itty bitty amino acids that is catabolism catabolism usually like takes big complex things, makes them smaller, less complex, and usually yields energy. Anabolism uh, uses energy, consumes energy to make big things. So if you are making um, proteins from amino acids, that takes energy, and that is anabolic. If you are building new cells, if you are um, synthesizing chemicals, all of that is anabolic. Um, we're going to talk mostly about catabolism. Uh, we will talk a little bit about anabolism in another video, but um, the anabolic processes are actually pretty different um, between different microbes and between different types of living organisms. So it's a more complicated subject and if you take a course in biochemistry uh, you're going to get into a lot more anabolism but catabolism is much more universal and um, is to a certain extent a little bit more important to the study of uh, microbiology. So that's what we're mostly going to focus on. So here you can see just uh, anabolism and catabolism, by the way, are linked. Right? Every cell has to do both. And every organism, with multicellular organisms, you can have s different cells that specialize, but every organism has to balance it's catabolism and anabolism, right? Um, 
since anabolism requires energy, usually in the form of ATP, and it's going to require building blocks, you have to get those from someplace. Catabolism takes energy storage, right? So uh, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, stuff like that, breaks them down, releases stored energy, which is captured in the form of ATP, and releases precursor molecules, which are the building blocks. Without catabolism, there can be no anabolism and vice versa. Um, and of course, since no organism is perfect, biology is a sloppy thing, um, every time you do a chemical transformation, breaking things down or building things up, some of the energy is lost as heat. So that means that you're always going to have to be taking in energy from an outside source. Whether that energy is in the form of chemicals, because you're a chemotroph, or in the form of sunlight, because you're a phototroph, or in some things, both. Uh, but because anytime you do any chemical process, you're losing energy, you're going to have to gain that energy back through some way. So, uh, the processes of catabolism and anabolism are uh, very closely related to the ideas of oxidation and reduction. These are chemical reactive processes um, that have to do with electrons and how they move. Well, all chemistry, at least all um, uh, uh, classical chemistry, uh, non-atomic chemistry, has to do with electrons and how they move, um, but specifically oxidation and reduction means when electrons are gained or lost, as opposed to simply being shared and then shared differently. Uh, oxidation specifically refers to the loss of electrons, removing electrons from a chemical. And this, I said, usually forms a chemical bond. That, that's, that's not necessarily true. It can either form or break a chemical bond. Usually oxidation will break a single bond or form a double bond. Um, but it will typically form or break a bond. A bond is a, a chemical bond is a pair of electrons. So, uh, and uh, electrons almost always move in pairs. If you lose a pair of electrons, something's going to happen to one of your chemical bonds. It's either going to break or you're going to form a new one, depending upon whether the electrons were already involved in a bond or not. Um, reduction means adding electrons to a chemical. Uh, and again, this can either break or uh, form a chemical bond, uh, depending upon how it's done and where they're added to. Um, but it's going to do something to change the number of bonds that a uh, a chemical has. So here we have two carbons attached by a single bond. This bond is a pair of electrons that are shared between these two carbons. And uh, like the, the, hopefully you guys know some very, very basic chemistry. Uh, but the basic rule of chemistry is that atoms want to have eight electrons around them, generally. So here you can see this carbon here, right, has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. And to get to eight, it's got these two shared 
electrons. This carbon over here, same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then the two shared to get to eight. Now, watch what happens when we oxidize one of these carbons. So first thing to notice, electrons can't be just, well, they can. Electrons are very seldomly going to be just floating around out there by themselves, unattached to something. When that happens, it's what we call radiation, and it's, you know, pretty dangerous. We don't want it to be happening inside of our bodies, for instance. Uh, so usually, if something loses electrons, something else has to gain them. So here, we saw this carbon here lost two electrons. So it was oxidized. This molecule here, called NAD+, received the two electrons. In order for something to lose electrons, something else has to gain them, usually. And so this was reduced. Usually reactions that involve oxidation and reduction are called redox reactions because it always has to happen in pairs. If something is oxidized, something else has to be reduced and vice versa. Um, a couple of things are going to happen here. First off, this NAD+, which is a, a chemical, which is called an electron carrier. This is like what your, what life in general, what cells use to carry electrons around, to move them from place to place. Because this is a molecule that can very easily gain electrons or lose electrons. So when you have extra electrons, you stick them on NAD+. When you need more electrons, you get them from NADH, which is what this is going to turn into. So watch carefully what happens here. So this NAD+, turns into NADH, and I've colored it red to indicate that it is now energy rich. The energy of those two electrons has been transferred to it. And it had a positive charge. The electrons each have a negative charge. So this, when it was NAD+, had a positive charge. It got two electrons. One counters the positive. The other one adds a negative. So it was briefly NAD-. And so it picked up a proton, which is a positively charged hydrogen atom. Uh, or ion, to counterbalance it. So it, 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 the first electron neutralized its negative. The second one was neutralized by a proton coming in. Next thing that happens, or actually the thing that happens at the same time, is this carbon now only has six electrons. One, two, three, four, and five, six. It doesn't want to have only six electrons. It wants to have eight. It really wants to have eight. And so this carbon will share two more electrons with it. Now they each have eight again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in this case, uh, a bond was formed when it was oxidized, specifically a double bond was formed. A single bond was converted into a double bond. Oxidization is usually going to either just break a bond or form a double bond. Um, This NADH 
can now go somewhere else. It could go off somewhere else in the cell where there's another molecule that needs to be reduced. And the process can then be reversed. The NADH will yield up its electrons. And this could be to a totally different molecule, which will then reduce this and oxidize this.